Hello and welcome to Crash Helmet Formula One. Christ, boys, we got so much stuff to talk about today. We had a great race. Fuck. Azerbaijan. It like, did it again. Well done, Baku. It was. <laughs> like, I think we were all thinking going into Baku, we're like, or we're expecting far too much. There's no way it can repeat last year. And it did, and more. <laughs> it surpassed Except it. for the, the only fault, the only fault Baku had this year was maybe we didn't have enough racing because uh, we sent, spent so long behind the safety car. Pretty great race. Oh, what we had was fantastic, but I'd love. I was just, I was there. The race was over. I was like, I want more. I, I was just, I wanted an encore. I wanted ten more laps. I think Grosjean cost us more. He did. Oh, we would have had a great hunt. <laughs> <laughs> we would have had a great seven or eight end laps, and then Grosjean and was, took I, the paddle. Like it's well known that I'm not a, I'm not a Roman Grosjean fan, and he was doing so well. He was driving. He was in race. sixth he place was, behind yeah. the safety car. He was gonna pick up a ball of points and Marx Ericsson fucking hit him Marx Ericsson <laughs> <laughs> Ericsson hit me he was about and 100 sna- metres back and snakes have legs yeah <laughs> oh lads snakes did originally have legs <laughs> <laughs> fucking useless information for this episode unfriend <laughs> goodbye um so then I suppose what do we think of Quali in, in Baku yeah well, well let's talk about Q1 the you know, Toro Rosso instant. <laughs> oh, lads. Break his hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was saying, oh, lads, because of the Q1 incident. Uh, yeah. I nearly, I nearly, my heart was in my mouth when I saw the replay of it. That was so close to being an airplane crash. Gasly done fantastically was. well. Uh, to avoid it. To avoid yeah, it. His, he did. his cat-like reactions were fantastic. He was on a hot lap. Um, I felt very, I felt very sorry for, for Hartley. Yeah. He, he, he had a double puncture and it was going into a corner where... It was blind. It, it, like, if you, if he positioned himself any further to the left... It would have been more blind. Yeah, like at least he put himself in a place where he could be seen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he was, but very, he it was hard to decide whether to go left or right. One thing I really really liked about Hartley with the incident was he completely owned up to it. He said he felt stupid. I'm sorry. Yeah, and like, really sorry about. He it. knew how bad it was being in the car. Not he, like there's no way he could have a perspective of how close it was in the car. Look, no, he would because he was sat there crawling. Next thing, this car zooms past like 300 yeah. kilometers an hour. Man, yeah. I'd say he shot himself. Yeah, but like it, well, I mean, we were talking about a couple of centimeters. It was a couple of centimeters. You yeah. actually see Gasly's on board; like he just narrowly avoids mm-hmm. him. On the talk of Gasly and like narrow misses, fucking Kevin Magnussen out of nowhere. The dirt. We love Kevin Magnussen. Let's just get this here. We do love Kevin. We're big Kevin fans. <laughs> <laughs> so the amount of people that talk about we don't we don't end topics. But okay, let's see. Let's so jump what? again. Mag, K okay, Mag. What do you reckon? Was it intentional? No. Did he know he was going to hit him? Probably, but there's no point. Like, ah, at, that, at that stage, he was that close. Like, you might as well fucking. Continue. He was he was racing very hard. He, he was, was filthy. Kim Mike race races hard. hard, questionably whether or not if it's fair or not at, t- at times. But I gotta to love hard. him. I gotta love him. Uh, like, oh, yeah. I, I don't think Kim Mike knew how close Gasly was. <laughs> I, I think he out. did. <laughs> no, because if you look at the onboard from from Magnus's car, <laughs> his wing mirrors are. No wonder so many bits fall off his car. They're, it's the, the structural integrity of the car is. Ooh, questionable. I, I it bring, is American. I always bring us, <laughs> I always bring us back to Gene's Haas remarks, like I did a few episodes ago as well. We underestimated the effect of aerodynamics in Formula One. <laughs> it you still know, seems that they haven't come around to realizing quite the amount of aerodynamics in F1 sure, cars. Popping them out of Xanax, he's taking. You underestimate oh, most things. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, man. <laughs> oh Lord above! Well, we actually finish on qualifying. Yeah, yeah. Let's, 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 let's round up on quality. So. Was Kimi going to take Paul? Absolutely. Yeah, I'd say he was, he was on for it. He, he was, was on. definitely on you, for it. He, he was definitely on for it. Um. Yeah. And actually, can I just say, right? my my streak of being correct is still going. <laughs> it's still going. It's still, but I think Mark had a better qualifying session than previous. They had a lot uh, better, yeah, I think previous. they're starting to figure out the tyre problems. Slightly. I don't know. I think the could weather slightly brought it towards them as well for quality. But were they, they were kind of stronger in Bahrain, which was warmer than they were in China. Yeah, but there's less uh, I think radiant heat if you get me in Bahrain. Oh, that's true. But but the weather factor is completely down to correlation in the previous years. Nobody can really explain why Mercedes runs better in, in yeah, colder Merce- temperatures. Merce- Mercedes just can't. <coughs> <coughs> oh, the Sorry, he's got oh, yeah, to yeah. tuberculosis. Oh, yeah, uh, oh, okay. Good um, Mark, Mark just can't seem to turn the tyres on in qualifying. They've only done it once all year in qualifying. That was Australia. Mm-hmm. They, they got the car and in the, like I I genuinely believe that car is fundamentally probably quicker than a Ferrari when it's in its window. But the problem is its window is so narrow. That's, a, that's another thing I was going to bring up on the Merc as well is that in straight line with the strong headwind, I thought it would have been a lot better considering it runs a lot less rake than mm-hmm. the Red Bull or the yeah. 
<clears throat> Ferrari. Mm. It wasn't a headwind down the straight though. It was a crosswind. It was down the straight. I, uh, yeah. It was a crosswind down oh, the main okay. straight. That's why Hamilton had the big lock off into turn one. Right, I get you. Yeah. Someone who had incredible straight line speed was the Renaults. The Renault, yeah, they came out of the, nowhere. They had the fantastic pace. They can turn on the tires like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, Hulkenberg was extremely unlucky. He just pushed too hard. Um. Is that signs should have been pitted one lap earlier because his tires did fall off a cliff. Yeah. But that that um, there I was there was actually a lot of cliff action at the weekend with tires. Not really. Uh, not for Bottas. <laughs> no. Set like, the fastest lap. Bottas. Valtteri Bottas set the fastest lap of the race on lap thirty six mm-hmm. on the same tires he did quality on. Yeah, I mean, people. You look at the start of the race. You're thinking, Bottas can has no pace here. He's 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 falling miles behind Hamilton. But it was the perfect strategy. Was, a safety car was was guaranteed yeah. that, after that's, the pit stop as well. He was pulling away from Hamilton before the I think, puncture. I think that shows a fuck up on Pirelli's part completely. How so? When, when you get put on a new pair, a new set of tires, not a new pair, mm-hmm. you want to come out of pits and be on it straight away. Like look at the Ricardo Verstappen incident. Ricardo got track position, then pitted, and then was slower on ultra soft tires. Than Max Verstappen, I think. I think though there is an issue as well is that they, if they went with the softer compounds too, back the straights would have been so long they would just boil the tires off. Absolutely, <laughs> I think the hypers wouldn't have lasted. No, the hypers wouldn't have lasted at all. They couldn't have predicted it, what happened. But I think with Pirelli, Pirelli have to stop dictating, saying, "Look, the super softs are going to last X amount of laps. The softs will last Y amount of laps." got to stop doing that and allow the teams to rely on their own data that they've gathered through testing and practice teams do that anyway like no yeah, team but they're not they're, they're taking Pirelli's word for gospel they're not though no team ever runs to distance with Pirelli's like look at Force India with Perez look at Merck with Bottas Ferrari, look at Ferrari with Raikkonen mm. yeah, but at the end of the day the tyres are the same for everyone so I think it's fair game you know, it's down to the teams to what rely. Is it? No, it is. But it's down to the teams to rely on their own data to know yeah. how to work the, the tires. Thing, the like reason, Mercedes is having massive issues turning on the tires. The only reason no Pirelli do that is to cover their arses with the tires. They would mm-hmm. say, "Look, it. We can guarantee this strategy will get mm-hmm. you to the end of the race roughly at this amount of time." Because they Pirelli's tires have to cover three hundred kilometers of good racing mm. and no more. But like the thing, the thing he said about like being a fair game. Yeah, it is fair game. But like it's fair game that the tires are shit for everyone. It's not good racing when it takes ten laps to heat the tires up. Good racing is what I you thoroughly can enjoyed the race. Well, it was a brilliant race, but like, the t- imagine that if the tires were on it straight away and then all of a sudden just fall off the cliff. Imagine how many more crazy incidents we would have had. We did. We had them years ago. Yeah, 2010, you know? 2011. Yeah, that was well, it was brilliant. Tires completely yeah. falling off a cliff, and the people were complaining about that too. Yeah, Silverstone 2013. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> explosive all the punctures. Yeah, yeah, sharp curbs. Um, we're seeing a lot more on the Abbey. We're seeing a lot more punctures this year. We are seeing a lot of punctures this year. Is yeah. that anything to do with tires, or is I it is it due to the increased downforce? Downforce, I think, is playing a massive issue. You know? yeah. um, like I'd love to see the bit of uh, carbon fiber or metal that that burst fell through. It was tire. metal. It was metal. Yeah. So there was. I I don't know. It must have been. But even look at Alonso, double puncture. Magnussen, double puncture. Yeah. Um, any contact at all with the tire seems to more often or not result in a puncture. It does. Yeah. So is this Pirelli's fault? Is this what? What's the story? Sharp front wings. Like <laughs> are the ti- the tire wall wall seem to be extremely weak. They are weak, but it's yeah. a case of um, a lot of the punctures are occurring in lateral motion. So like a driver's going this way, or a driver's going that way. So you're putting a lot of yeah. <laughs> you can race in sign language. It is racing sign language. <laughs> um, no, like if you, if you put a lot of uh, lateral thrust into a tire, yes, you're stretching the material close to the edge of the sidewall, and yeah. that's it, it. Leaves it easier to cut. Like I just think Pirelli's very much like a referee. They're just, they're never going to get it right. It's never going to be perfect. Like, it's a, people could argue then, why don't we go back to Bridgestones? And they were equally shit because they were fucking, they were too good to tire. They were too good. They were too good. And then people, like, they had to cut grooves in that. Yeah. And like, like Pirelli then were like a case of, okay, so we'll make tires that fall apart after like 10 laps. Yeah. People hated it. Okay, we'll make them go last the distance. People hated it. People are going to complain with the tires. Absolutely. No, um, I, just, I just don't think they're good at all now. Yeah. It's it's not like you look Max qualifying. Stu- no, you you just like the tires because Merck can't switch them on. And Hamilton can't run races as a result. No, but like you look at qualifying. They do warm up laps to get the tires into the window. That's fucking shite. Why? No, I think it adds yeah, it more adds strategic skill, element. talent. Like you wouldn't have had Grosjean's in- instant uh, if the tires weren't that hard to heat up. Like he was do- he was trying his best to get any any heat at all he could to get into the tires, and he fucked it. Yeah, and you have to remember as well, it was very, there was a lot of cooling on that day in Baku. Like, if you remember back to 20, 2011, 2012, 
drivers are doing the slowest outlaps possible. Mm-hmm. I mean, crawling. Oh yeah, and in laps as well after quali, which which caused a lot of obstructions. I like that though. I no, like crawling. No, and it was and unfair. Then nailing it. No, you shouldn't have to deal with any obstructions in quali. 2014, 2015 tires were very good. They were. They were very in the window. That's the kind of degradation and life we need in tires again. Okay. Just one last point on tires. Uh, Max Verstappen came out last week and was saying that. Uh, it's too complicated we've got too many choices and it needs to be simplest, uh, made more simple and that the fans don't give a fuck about tyres where do you stand on that do we want it complicated do we want it simple is he right or There's wrong too many he's chatting horse shite I, I, th- I love it I think because of the range of tracks track conditions like in terms of surface conditions if you go to Monaco yeah with the current breed of F1 car mm-hmm. and you give them say 2015's uh, super softs they wouldn't be able to get around that lap. They'd be sliding. They'd be understeering like crazy. Mm. The issue is that these cars are so heavy. You need reactive. You need tires that can hold the the, the energy of the car itself. Mm-hmm. But these tires are going to be a nightmare in Monaco this year. With how long are they taking to heat up? Well, no, the hypersofts will be fine. <laughs> Even the hypersofts were taking. Have we had hypersofts yet? No, we haven't had. But any. like the one above the hypersoft, the ultrasoft. No, no, the ultrasoft below the hypersoft. The ultrasoft is what we ran this weekend. Yep. We haven't. We didn't run the softest car. No, I mean, hyper, like, is, second so- hyper is pink. But uh, even, yeah, purple is then the the, the ultra soft. Mm-hmm. But even the ultra soft tires struggling to heat up. Like, I think something needs to change, or else the teams need to figure out how to fucking put heat. Into I them. think it's all down to the teams, and I, I, and, and I like I like the colors. Yeah. I like <laughs> I like colors. <laughs> no, I think I think it's the right choice that what they've done at the minute because the tracks are varying massively this season. Fantastic tires done. Yeah, uh, front wings finished on something. We did. We did. Can we actually talk about We're conclusive? Race? Yeah. Front wings, actually. Yeah. Just that we mentioned um, this pe- this season so far. We've seen a fantastic amount of overtaking. Much more than we oh, saw last season. Brilliant. The last three races have been probably three of the best over the last three or four seasons. Yeah. It, like, it, and it, absolutely fantastic. The FIA have come to this conclusion that they'll make the wings simpler. I don't know how they're going to do that. Mm. But there was been so <laughs> many over. There were so many overtakes in Baku that we didn't even get to see them all in telly. Yeah. Which was very annoying because I was looking at Charles Leclerc. <laughs> he was bumping up the positions. I was like, I want to see this overtake. I was just like waiting for the highlight, and mm. it didn't come. Didn't he overtake Alonso? Yeah, it's Beautiful. like third lap or something. That was the change of guard. That was a double world champion handing over the reins <laughs> to the new <laughs> up and coming one of the all time greats. No, no, he will. Not, he not will. Like Charles, Charles Leclerc will be world champion. Not like Alonso dragged his floor around half a lap. And credit yeah, to was, him. That was, that was passing over the reins. <laughs> no, let's give massive credit where credit is due to Alonso for not parking up his car where 90% of drivers would. Yeah. yeah. He he brought it to the pits, limped it there, and even getting it into the pit, pit was box difficult. Yeah. was very difficult. He said himself it was one of his best ever races. Yeah, he, still, he got a good, good call of points. Seventh. Yeah, and seven. he still, it didn't take him long to overtake Van Dorn. No, it didn't. Van Dorn's been awful disappointing. He's been yeah. very disappointing. Well, we'll come back to that. Uh, front wings. Front wings. At the minute, right, the regulations are, here's a box. Mm-hmm. Put do your, what you want. Do what you want. Here's a box, do what you want. It's like, at the moment, right, everybody's saying, oh, there's too many elements in a wing. Fundamentally, though, if you look at those close up, they all come to like one root. There's only maybe two or three elements on a front wing. Yeah, it's just, just all split up into little There's a lot of holes in it. And at the minute, they have a minimum surface area requirement. Mm-hmm. And they have a minimum. <clears throat> I think the only way they can control this is if they control like how they control the noses. That if you take a cross section through it, it has to be continuous at any point or something to that effect. What I think what we'll get is like 2009 wings again. They look like 2009 or 2010 oh, that's wings. a massive backward step. I mean, if you want to see a development of a Formula 1 car over the last 10 years, you, you compare the front wings. Like like the you, performance gain from the front wing is negligible. Like If you do stuff to the I floor, you can get a much bigger performance gap, performance leap. Okay. Like I don't think they'll lose speed because of it. Like that, they the reason, They'll lose a huge amount of speed. Do you think speed. so? Yeah. I, I see laps next year. If and it's an area where there's a lot of experimentation. I, I reckon we're wing. not going to be much faster than 2016 cars if we go back to simpler front wings. Yeah, but they're making the rear wings more uh, wider and deeper. It doesn't matter. You have to balance the aero. That's true, actually. So you're going to make the cars... That, if you want to get the same balance of aero and you're making your rear wing bigger from what it currently is, that means you need more downforce from your front wing, which means you have to run at a higher angle of attack. So mm. it, it forces the team to do one of two things. Either run a car with a lot more rake or run a car with a lot uh, deeper front wing, which means more drag which means a slower straight line speed. If you're following a car with high levels of rake, is mm-hmm. the dirty air element less? No. The, no. Okay. The car still throws off a huge amount of I know, but I just yeah. thought if you're running high rake, that the air might not be as disturbed because Hi- it's coming from under. High rake cars tend to follow easier, isn't it? They do follow yeah. easier, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not 
the difference between American and Ferrari <coughs> They're very similar. Uh, in it's a, it's a fart in a hurricane. I don't like. see, look. I don't see <laughs> fart in a hurricane. Well, no, like the, the, look, clearly, like, clearly. Clear, clear. Sorry to go back there a second. Uh, in what was it in two thousand and thirteen? Like the manner around Spa was still five seconds a lap faster than the LMP one cars. Mm-hmm. That like, and that was a golf away from the cars at the front. Doesn't seem like that's uh, when we're talking about it's big struggling margins. to make one hundred and seven percent. Yeah, big big mm-hmm. margins in Formula One are very very sorry, very small margins. Yes. Yeah. But we've seen good overtaking this year. Well, like there's, there, like, based on the racing we've seen this year, yeah. there doesn't need to be any change. Uh, but uh, the rules are already ratified, and you know, oh. to solve this issue as well, what have they done? They've made the cars fucking wider. It's like, yeah, we're going to improve overtaking by making the cars wider. <laughs> what kind of fucking gobshites <laughs> work at the FIA? Like when you're going through the old town section in Baku, there's just about enough room to get the car through. Yeah. <laughs> as That's it is, and like, how much wider are they going to make them? Like fucking ten or fifteen mil? Is it not only the rear wing to make them wider? No, they make the front wing wider as well. They've said that. Oh no, just to the weight of the car. I don't it is think the width of the car at the minute. No, it's not. Oh, so now we're going to have more punctures because you've got wider less? front wings. I think it's I think it's something like no, front, fifteen or twenty mil less. Need, no, it is. They've made it. They've it's made two it meters the minute. The front no. wheel base. Yeah, the wheelbase is, but the wings less than that. Are you sure about that? I s- yeah, look it up. The, the, if you look, no, if you actually look at the front wing of a new F1 car, mm-hmm. the wings actually slightly, slightly smaller than the width of the car. No, is it the width of the car? Maybe I'm not sure about the side po- and the floor width regulations, but I'm on about the set. If you take the center line, axle points. Yes. And if you if you do away with camber, if you bring the the wheels in to account yeah. for camber. I'm fairly sure the outside of the wing is level. Bring back dildo wings. Just tell us in the comments. Dildo noses. <laughs> dildo noses, yes. Will we, will we talk about... I mean, could you imagine Imagine a dildo nose when uh, Ricardo went up the whole of Verstappen? I was just about to say... That would have caused massive damage. It would have, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> so, Who was it had the double fist? Was it Lotus. R- Lotus. Lotus, Lotus, yeah. Double fist. <laughs> Did you what? Two tusks. tusks. The two tusks. Two tusks. Kind of stuck down like this. But, um, <laughs> no, going back to that though, who do you, who do you put at fault for the accident? We know 50-50, okay, whatever. No. I, who would you put the blame at? At first... 60-40 Verstappen. Yeah, at first glance, I put it fully on Ricardo. Ricardo. Yeah. But then when I watched it in slow motion or whatever, like, yeah, Ricardo came in way too hot, and I don't think he was even going to make the corner with the speed he was going. Ricardo had no he, hope. No, he had no hope of making the corner, I don't no. think. Um, <clears throat> but if you actually watch it, Verstappen did his usual instant of, like, moving. He only did it ever so slightly, but he did move twice in the breaking zone. Like it was, it was only minor, but Ricardo was too hot. If he's hot moving, here. he's not breaking. No, you can move while breaking. For Verstappen, always moves in the breaking zone. Should that be allowed? Move in the breaking zone. Yeah. It's a, no, it's illegal. You're only allowed to move once. Well, why? Why should no? You're allowed to, as per the regulations. You, yeah, you're only allowed to move. You're once. allowed one defensive move, and, and then you're allowed to move back to the racing line. Yeah, and because Ricardo wasn't ahead of Verstappen, mm-hmm. uh, Verstappen defines the racing line. This is this is where this is where your opinion differs. You you maintain that the lead driver defines the racing he does. line. That's Bert Mylander. Uh, sorry, not Bert Mylander. Fucking safety car driver. Yeah. Uh, what do you call him? Jesus, Le Mans fella. Tom Christensen made this point before when uh, Vettel did some fucking dodgy move in Hamilton, and Tom Christensen said it was the fact of because Hamilton didn't get his front wing alongside Vettel's rear wheel, mm-hmm. Vettel was entitled to take whatever line he wants through the corner. Look, it more probably is Ricardo's fault, but it's just easier to blame Verstappen <laughs> yeah, but I think re- regardless of it being Ricardo's fault or if you want to apportion more to blame to Ricardo, the fact of the matter is and it's again this is the fourth weekend Go on. and the fourth incident for Max Verstappen and like he's, he's just finding himself in trouble constantly yeah well, like, the thing is though all those issues <clears throat> right are times where he's tried to do something good for his race oh no it is but like he needs to find a limit Oh, he's no, a little no. over the limit now. Where, Look, at the end of the day, he he, like, it's, it's entertaining. What? He, and he brought a blockbuster to finish doing, to the race. He needs to keep doing what he's doing. But I think the main blame has to lie with, with the team. If oh, the, te- if the, the team mm. should have implemented team orders, uh, you know, give a lead driver five laps of where, you know, try and develop out a gap. Mm-hmm. If you can't develop a gap, we're switching you. Um, well then no that's like that's bullshit as well because people would complain then like, they would complain racing. but I mean if the team is there to get as much points as possible on a safe race and that's what they should do okay and would you respect uh, any driver no you wouldn't respect it but no. uh, you have to remember but at Danny the end Rick- of the day Red Bull, Red Bull are there to get as much publicity as possible they that don't, was great publicity they don't give them. a fuck if they crash or not alright uh, they, they crash they, they win do. they don't crash they win <laughs> like Red Bull as a brand yeah, uh, like the publicity they gain from that is fantastic. The only person that loses is the two drivers and Christian Horner. Yeah, 
Well, everybody has it worked very hard to put that car on the circuit. Uh, they're going to work hard anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like, even before the incident, two of them banged wheels twice. They did, yeah. Like, it was it was getting... Like, it was coming. I, when everybody it cut saw to, it coming. Yeah, when it cut through... Like, <laughs> like well, I was sat on the couch watching it, and as soon as it cut through Ricardo was on board, as he was coming into Verstappen's strip stream, mm. as he got close, I was like... I went... Actually, went, I think I went, oh... And then bang. He's like, I knew it was coming. Yeah. I just knew it was coming. Going back to that, though, do we think a driver should be allowed to defend as hard as possible? To the point of where he's not, like, impeding the other driver completely. Well, once no, you, once well, your whole car is in front, you know, you can defend hard. But where do you where do you def- draw the line on when when you have a nose alongside I'm, your, your I'm, rear axle? I'm happy with people, as long as the front wing isn't uh, beside the rear wheel. So so long as there's not a portion yes. of the car alongside. Like, so as long as you're not putting them into the if, wall. If you're, or, if you're not but put- how come it's okay? We, 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 <coughs> we, we call things like this, like, like what Hamilton did to Verstappen... Uh, in China, okay, I, I disagree, didn't do anything. I disagree with that. No, but he, he ran him completely off the road, he did. and most people. No, were, he got snap over most people, corner. most people were generally happy with that. Alonso did something similar to Vettel. No, Alon- but, Alonso was right in what he did because Vettel wasn't ahead of him at the time. Okay, but if but these Vettel- were street, if this was Monaco or Baku, yeah, them guys were in massive danger. Like, you, like how come it's different to a street circuit to a to a race circuit? We're literally drawing the line at safety, not racing regulations well no the the moving under Verstappen's like most infamous moments of moving under the brakes was probably in Spa yeah we're which, right is like, which is a really safe circuit to crash at <laughs> in effect but what I'm saying is though, is that I think if a driver isn't alongside you maybe that's you should top, be able to defend that's, a top, 10 we should, that's yeah. a top 10 we should do if safest if, circuits to crash at if, Paul Ricard number one <laughs> if if you get any part of your car alongside the other car yeah. you deserve that weight you yeah. deserve your full car's width. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's why, yeah. looking back at the Rosberg Hamilton incident in Spain two yeah. years ago, that's why that went down as a racing incident because Rosberg but, moved over to defend it. But, but just as he got to the edge, Hamilton just got his wing alongside and then bang. But yeah. then where do we stand on Ricardo's move on Bottas? Because Bottas just left him enough room. That's fine. But if Bottas yeah. didn't leave him any room, then Bottas had been there Ricardo was going into the back of him. Ricardo wasn't getting his car stopped. No, Ricardo got himself alongside before yeah. Bottas completely came over. That that's what that's what we're saying. That's but we at the head of Bottas for not defending hard enough. No, we didn't. A lot of people did. I didn't see anybody. Give no, out I Bottas. thought Bottas defended very hard. But Bottas defended fairly, very fairly, very yeah. fairly. Like, but Bottas had the Bottas had the presence of mind not, not to fuck up his own race. Not the defense mm. of a world champion. He knew he knew he wasn't. It was exactly the defense of a world champion. No. Alan Prost. Well, maybe Alan Prost. Well, like, come on! At the, at the at this point in time, like he's the third most successful driver of all time. Driver, well, well, fourth, fifth. Forward. You wouldn't see Michael do that. Who? Well, who would have thought of Hamilton, Vettel, Prost? No, uh, no, no, no. It's going to be Schumacher, Fangio, uh, Hamilton, Vettel, and then Prost. That's a nice top. Five. Michael wouldn't have left that gap. Uh, Ayrton definitely would not have. Lewis wouldn't have, and Vettel would not have. Question: Alonso probably. Lewis did, and Verstappen overtook him <laughs> <laughs> a couple of laps later. <laughs> no, I, I, re- I reckon that. Um, that would have I reckon Vettel or Hamilton would have left that they would have Vettel and Hamilton and Alonso have all re- like you've seen it Monza they're wise heads Vettel and ha- Alonso at Monza two years in a row came very close to disaster but they still they still have the presence of mind not to fuck up their own races they know it's best to lose seven points there and then yeah. than to crash out and lose 25 potentially yeah. <coughs> fair enough that's the wise head of a driver so yeah. we'll right, who to- had the worst lock up uh, Hamilton or Vettel 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 yeah. obviously his tyres were well, destroyed yeah. <laughs> Well done to Perez because although <laughs> what <laughs> topic over <laughs> <laughs> done <laughs> well, no but as in when when Vettel ruined his tires Perez got by him but mm. Vettel's tires seemed to come back to him after that my ears were uh, sore you can wear off the flat spots sort of yeah. it's probably because there wasn't much compound left on the tire to begin with I was happy with Sergio who was your what else you driver of the day Charles Leclerc Charles Leclerc yeah He's such a hands down great yeah. man Van Dorn Van Dorn's yeah, going to be man. out of a seat at the end of the season if he's yeah. not fucking picking up the buck very soon who's going to there's, 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 jump in no, there's, there's rumours of Lando Norris taking Alonso's seat like, uh, I think McLaren could have a completely new lineup next year if Alonso yeah. leaves I don't know if Alonso was going to bother his arse but I don't know who's going to take Alonso Alonso's best well, no Alonso might retire or go to Le Mans he's not going to retire yeah that's what I mean like retire I don't think Alonso's going to retire I think Lando Norris is in that team next year regardless of who would leave it's probably going to be Van Dorn sadly he needs to book up his goat like <laughs> he hasn't been good at all. He's been fucking terrible. Jeez, he's been, he's been shite. Yeah, he's been like I mean, he's been unbelievably bad this season. Apart from even the younger drivers, who else is re- prepared to jump into a to a seat? 
Like, I, like you know, it's hard to see. Like, we know the Polish man's ready jumping. <laughs> he is though. No, I mean, if you're gonna throw a driver straight in, Lando Norris. He's, I know he into pro- the McLaren. McLaren would never have him. None, none of the teams would have him. I reckon you could see Ocon gone next season Renault in favour of George him. Russell. Yeah, Mark want George Russell in as quickly as possible. And Ocon, he's kind of shot the bed. Like he had a very consistent season last season, but this season he's been underperforming seriously. So is the car somewhat. So is the car, but Perez has still been able to bring the car home. Yeah. And like in the points, and like Jesus, like last a week podium, he, he got a podium. Yeah. Okay, now listen, as as similar to a stroll podium, like he kept his nose clean the whole race. But he still overtook Vettel. Together. Still overtook Vettel together. Yeah. Mm. And that's actually that's the second podium in Baku. In two yeah. years. He's the only driver in Baku history to have repeat podiums. <laughs> in his three year history. Yeah. That's. That's a stat well, technically half. speaking, there's only been two Azerbaijan Grand Prix, but there's been three races in Baku because oh, the first okay. one was the, the European. European Grand Prix. Grand Prix. Uh, <laughs> Sorry for any uh, technical difficulties you may have witnessed there. Uh, so, gentlemen, our e- camera is not working. <laughs> Each of the race, other than ourselves. <laughs> there, we all say them one, three, two, one. Grosjean. 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 Yeah. I don't think there's any question about that. Yeah. Fucking hell. That's uh, he, he's been. He's been before Baku. He's been in the newspapers talking about. Uh, his reputation as a complainer mm. and he's very annoyed at this and he's, well, no, been, no. he's been complaining uh, hold up what? he's complaining about being a complainer yes right okay Continue. yes <laughs> it's the point he think he was getting to. I think it's worth complaining about the fact that Roman Grosjean is complaining about the fact of, that he is a complainer right and we're complaining about the fact that he's complaining about people are complaining about him complaining oh man we've gone through the wall this is like Inception <laughs> whoa <laughs> <laughs> mind fuck uh, so, yeah. what about him in the race just yeah. shocking he was he was driving a brilliant race right up until he wasn't <laughs> <laughs> that's quite similar to my I know Grosjean's better but Magnussen's better comment would you change that comment if you could re- look back on it Grosjean was driving a brilliant race right up until he crashed. Yeah. There you go. That's too good of English. <laughs> <laughs> Do English good or... So, yeah. Roman Grosjean, Egypt of the day, no explanation needed. Look it up. Um, he, yeah. Oh, that I- interesting, interesting when they were recovering his car. I think Hamilton was right when he came over the radio. They had the tow truck out. Mm. I think oh, when I think whenever yeah, there's a recovery point. vehicle on the track, I think there should be a red flag. Yeah. yeah. There should be a red flag. That was Because Hamilton came over the radio and he was like, the end of that tow truck like the rear corner of it, he says, is at driver's head height in the car he says that's really dangerous I, like, I know people say oh but you won't crash behind a safety car fucking Grosjean did it yeah. like that could be a death it was lethal it was lethal it, yeah. it was a huge recovery truck and <clears throat> you know it's not a big track yeah no like, uh, fair there was, and like we lost seven laps of racing you know we could have red flagged it mm. fair play to Lewis for actually no he's right saying it, he, like. he was right he I'm said not always going to back Lewis but what did he say tell Charlie he, he told the team yeah, he to said tell, tell Charlie, Charlie yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely so when we think Bottas was robbed Bottas drove an excellent race he was pulling away he stuck to the strategy the no Hamilton was 8 tenths behind before he got the puncture yeah, but, uh, uh, the lap before that though Bottas was ahead yeah of Bottas him. pulled away but then Hamilton came back at him no Bottas was pulling away it on was, the lap no, on the, no at, the, at the finish line it was 8 tenths Hamilton because Hamilton was the only Hamilton was on new hypersofts and Bottas was on used Bottas oh, was winning. I fully believe. No, Bottas, Bottas was winning. Bottas, Bottas would have won. Bottas would have won, in my opinion. No, I think Hamilton would have got him. Not a hope. He would have. He you saw how you saw how quickly he dropped him in the first. Tell in, us in, in the, the comments. First Twenty laps of the race. If Bottas did not get a puncture, would Ham have got him? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Bottas was robbed, but I think he was robbed of second. I think Hamilton had him. No, he didn't. I was confident when Vettel no, locked up that Hamilton was going to win. I felt very sorry for Valtteri, and and clearly Hamilton did too, since he delayed the podium going over to. Con- I, but he's still a dickhead for doing that. Because all the Hamilton haters will still think, oh, you delayed no, the podium, mind. such a dickhead. <laughs> it was a professional requirement to be at the podium one time. It was a nice thing to do, though. It was a very nice thing to do. No. You can admit it. Like, you can admit. <laughs> <laughs> in talk of podiums, we won't get to see David Coulthard on the podiums anymore, given... Uh, We're interviews. going back to the old method. It's old stupid. Method. I don't like it. I liked it. I liked having the three of them sat there. No, because... Like, good, w- difficult question. When I want a driver going out of the car, I want to see him <laughs> running and celebrating with his... With his team, you'll still see that, still but see not that. as much because like he'll be celebrating his team. Then David Cooper like, "Come over here, we're going to talk to you." And no driver's going to do that. They want to celebrate with their team. Uh, I think a lot right. of the interviews in the podium have been a very cringy. Oh, they've been fucking shite yeah. all like, like, oh, Can we get we, Eddie George? We have amazing them. fans here. Fuck off, fucking PR cunts. <laughs> Rule in the roost. It's like they just give your opinion. Like, yeah. bring back Eddie Irvine. <laughs> Says it how it is. Yeah. So 
think it kind of covers all from the fucking madness. I, I just want to round up and say Lewis Hamilton's leading the World Drivers' Championship despite a torrid start to the season. Have not secured a pole yet? Well, he got a pole in Australia. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he was seven times. Not, not since I started predicting him. <laughs> no, <laughs> not since <laughs> no. you started. But that's the thing. That's, yeah. I'm happy. Uh, we've got a good we've got a good championship on our hands. Uh, we Fra- do. Ferrari did the constructors. They are, by four points, and Hamilton's in the drivers by four points. I was delighted to see Kimi on the podium. Yeah, it was good for him, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, after what happened at the start of the race, he done well. Yeah. I can see Kimi actually at some point getting ahead of Vettel, because Vettel's a habit of making mistakes and dropping Kim- back. Kimi's consistently on the podium, and I His. think he'll consistently be consistent. The thing is, though, is that <laughs> <laughs> he's still miles off Hamilton and Vettel. He's like 18 points yeah, behind think No, it's like 22. Like he's fucking is way it? adrift altogether. Yeah. Yeah. With the amount of overtaking we're having, we will see some DNFs for, for Hamilton and Vettel throughout the season. Oh, definitely, yeah. And if Kimi stays out of trouble, and Valtteri, Hamilton's, they've got every chance. Hamilton's on a 28 race streak in the points. That's, uh, like, it has to come to an end. It will come to an end. <clears throat> Something like Malaysia. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> if you actually watch that on board, when like... Yeah, it's great. No, have you, no like, there's an on board where... <clears throat> it, it's just like a feed for like three minutes and he stops the car and obviously his team radio is none and you can hear him screaming in the helmet he's like no no fuck and he's like hitting the steering wheel Excellent. and then he came going oh my god this has been Crash Helmet Media yeah that's sound good luck chat to you next time see you